an eargasm of learning, and a no-fuss show. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast, where you can learn straightforward topics about branding, digital entrepreneurship, online business, and many more with your charming host, John Santos, along with inspiring entrepreneurs, creators, and thought leaders worldwide. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Creative Talk Podcast with me, John Santos. And today, we have an amazing episode with a lovely guest. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm just excited because our guest for today, aside from being beautiful, aside from being humble, she is. She, I got you there. <laughs> no, I'll have more of that. I'll have more of that. <laughs> She's just an amazing human being. Um, very talented. I we've shared the stage on LinkedIn for a lot of times, and I believe it's going to be continuing. Um, partnering on on LinkedIn, and I had a glimpse of the message that this person is sharing, <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm more than a fan. I respect this person. I love the message that she is pushing. Our guest for today, guys, for everyone listening and watching, the Kickstarter founder. <laughs> you know, we'll talk about that later. Two-time LinkedIn top voice. Wow. Uh, you know, she is amazing. Entrepreneur, powerhouse, Wonder Woman, a friend. Let's all welcome Ali Uren. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello, Jan. Jan, thank you. But I have to correct you on one thing. Everything else is true, but only one time LinkedIn voice. Everything else. I'll take everything else, but I can't. You might get me confused with that awesome individual, Martin Stark. But I am. I'm, 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 you could do. You could do. But no, I'm, I'm only one time. One time, 2024. It could be, you know, the the second award is coming. Well, I hope so. I mean, I don't know how many you need. I'll just be happy to. I'll be happy to have one. I'll be happy to have one. But everything else is absolutely true. So good to good to be here with everyone today. Love you, love you so much, love you so much, Ali. All right, Ali. Um, I'm excited to know, and I know our viewers and and watchers, you know, uh, our supporters are excited to know. Who or what influenced you to be in this position you are right now? You know, the story behind the brand, your adventure. Feel free yeah. to share. The floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. So, look, I started back in entrepreneurialism back in 2008. So, before I got into this business um, and created Kickstart, I had a pretty varied career, I think it would be fair to say. I worked in advertising and marketing, so I understood about brand and communications and all of that piece before I came into the learning and development space. And I think that was really, really helpful. Um, when I worked and had my first proper job out of university, I worked in ad agencies and I just knew for me, Jan, that that wasn't going to be a long-term proposition for me, right? And I think there'd be a lot of people, for some people it works, for me it didn't. Mm. And so I knew that I was going to uh, go into my own brand at some stage. And so I got a lot of good uh, examples, had a lot of good opportunities, had some terrible experiences too, which we'll talk about today. You know, I had it, I had it all. Um, and so I recognised that I wanted to work in education and I wanted to do something different in the learning and development space because I saw gaps in what was being provided. And I think every entrepreneur starts because they see, well, a lot of the time, probably got big egos and we think we can do it better than most people, right? And that's why you do it, right? Because you think, hang on, this isn't working, this isn't meeting the mark, this, there's gaps in what we're giving people, we can do different, not just better. I never say better, I always talk about doing different. And so I put my money and my brains and my all my grey hairs and then went out and created this company, this business, because I saw, and the, the premise is still the same, Jan, even though I started it in 2008, it's still, it's probably even truer now than it even was then, that we need to be creating environments of continuous learning, right? Continuous learning in a way that's responsible, that doesn't add to burnout, doesn't increase stress, gives the ownership to the people. Oh, that's the difference, right? I like, mean, you know, all these quick wins and whatever. And no, no, no. What are, what are we facing, you know, in business and as a society? Because I think it is about, you know, it's bigger than us as individual businesses. And are we really creating the environments for people to step up and respond to those challenges in a way, right? In a way that is actually useful, that people own, not experts. And that really was the premise for starting it. And then 
you know, bring that entrepreneurial mindset, thinking, resources, end-to-end approach that people could own. That's now seen me work with over 200 purpose-led brands and facilitate and develop over 2,000 people. So it's been a pretty big career. You know, I've been, in, like I said, worked across all elements of organisational development, all those elements of learning and, and design and, and development as well too. So that brings me here now to this point and taking my influence out further afield. So wow. that's a very, that's a quick quick snapshot yeah. of a pretty full life, I think. I love that, I love that you, you know, you gave us a, a quick uh, story of your journey. And you mentioned you were, you know, you started 2008. Yeah. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is where around 2008, 2009 is where we started also. Yeah. Um, but, well, you know, back there it was like a totally different, uh, there's no social media just on its no. baby steps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, cool. and podcasting is is only for Apple. So when you mentioned 2008, and I was like, "Whoa, that is like time travel back." Yeah, correct. You went back then. That was regressive therapy, Jen. Oh, wow. Um, you mentioned about you know, uh, I, I love the I love the website and I love the company that you're 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 running and the message. But I, 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 I'm really excited to know more about, you know, the core of why you started that company, that that push, that drive. And that gives us our topic for today. Yes, it does. You know, how to turn challenges into opportunities. You know, this this really got me. This really got me. Because, I guys, for everyone that is listening and watching, um, I'm watching the website. I've heard Ali speak a lot of times. and you know, to avoid burnout, to mm. avoid, to to really cope up with failure. Those are the things that really can make or break you in this journey. Yeah. So, my yeah. friend, the floor is yours. Feel free to give us those knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. Yeah. So, if we go back to saying why why this business, what what makes it different? Well, it rejects the premise that growth is only found in your strengths. Now, it's just not. Like I have to say, you're going to get me fired up now. Okay, people, stay with me here. Stay with me because I've proven it again and again. We get taught very early on, don't we, you know, not to talk about certain things and to avoid certain topics. And that's led to a lot of fear in workplaces. Mm -hmm. I only talk about what you're good at. We only talk about what's successful, right? We don't delve in and talk about, hey, when did it go belly up? You know, when did we make mistakes? What are we? Where are our knowledge and skill gaps? We've all got them. Right, mate. So I wanted to destigmatize that and have continually been on a mission around that. That's the drive to say, hang on, our workplaces are not healthy. They're not well. So how do we make them well? We make them well by taking out the fear. You know, being able to make space, which I'm going to talk about, you know, when I've come across and I've had, like I said, lots of things go right, but also things that have gone not so right. And I'm going to take you through how I take what's my process, what are some practical right. tips that I do to be able to come through and overcome that. But for me, it's saying, hang on, when you can think differently about gaps and threats or risk and you don't fear that and you know how to turn it into something useful, there's so much liberty in that. There's so much freedom in that, Jen. You're not hamstrung to it, right? You're not fearful. You're not thinking, God, I'm going to get caught out, right? It's just a normal part of work. And that is really why I created the business and that is why I continue to get up and and do the work and dust myself off and keep going again and again to to actually reject that premise that, you know, strengths are where the growth is. No, 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 strengths are important, but they're only a very small part, right? You're only, as I said, you know, if we can just, I'll give you an analogy about the tennis player, right? If you've got a really strong forehand and a pretty weak, vulnerable backhand, what do you think your coach is going to do? They're not going to ignore the backhand that's not working, Right. Yeah, they're going to focus on, well, they're going to, you know, you've got a strong forehand, lovely, great, okay, we'll just work on that. But that's going to, you know, you'll be able to nurture that because that's that's where you're strong already. But hang on, what about the backhand, right? Like yeah. the opposition's not going to, you know, the opposition's not going to go, oh, we won't play to your backhand because it's not very good, right? Like, and that's the same in business, right? Competition or whatever, I'm going to go, oh, well, we, they're not that strong there. We, how about we just play to their strengths? No, 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 they are going to exploit what they can too, right? So it doesn't make sense. If you want to reduce vulnerability in life and business, you have to start having discussions around mistakes, gaps, threats, and risk. And that is what I love. I mean, maybe I'm not normal, but that's where 
I don't think I am normal. I never said I was, Jan. I never said I was. But that is where I've found the greatest value in my work and in the company and the work that's been done in the last, what, 16 years, or however long it's been now. I'm losing count. But, yeah, that's that's the great. And I think particularly when you look where we're going now as an organ, you know, as just as a global community, that is where the gold will be. So do you want me to take you through some things I do from a practical sense? Yeah. Jen? yeah. But, but first, before we start with that, Ali, sure. I love you. I love the energy. <laughs> I, I just love you. And yes, you are normal. We all are unique, and that's the reason why you're in the show. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I found my, I found my happy place. <laughs> all right. So you mentioned about the process. Yeah. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there that, you know, there's the suffering on different different yeah, challenges sure. and, and they, they're lost, right? Mm. We were once and we all need help. So take me to, uh, let's not give it away, you know, everything, because I want them to connect with you and yes. have uh, yes, a sure. really hone in coaching talk yeah. with you. Yeah. So just give us a glimpse of your process, yeah. my friend. So I'm going to take you through um, what I tend to do, just even for myself, just from a, a holistic point of view. So mm. when, look, I've, I'll give you an example. Um, and look, like I said, there's been a number of things that happen in, in business. And I remember one where, and this is when I was younger and greater, where I had all my eggs in one basket with a particular client and there was a change in management. Management came in, didn't quite understand or respect the work that was happening at the time and basically asked me to do something that just was against the, the values of myself and a lot of the business. And I had to say, I am not prepared to deliver on that. So they were then like, okay, so that's, you know, like I said, you can always you can always get more money in clients, really hard to get another reputation right. that easy, right? So remember that, people. When you, you know, when everyone needs to make a buck, I get it, but at what cost too, right? So think about that. So we actually parted ways. I just had built a house and had a nice mortgage. I'd lost my major client, Dan, so I lost basically 90% of income pretty well right away. So that was one of those challenging times where you think, right, that's just happened. So this is what I do, and I've had a few of them in my time. I always, the first thing I do is give myself a couple of days grace. Wow. So I do nothing. I do nothing. I, I literally will down tools, right? Because I have to process it. I have to process it and not even just process, just sit with what's happened. So I don't, you know, I'll never go bang, bang. So from that moment, that decision was made, then straight into something else again. It's like, no, no, hang on, wait a minute. What just happened there? And so for me, it will be, it's mentally, it's a commitment that I make to myself. And it may be one or two days, but it's a grace period. And I actually make an agreement with myself that when that period is up, that is when I start again. But I just find it's important for me mentally to uh, have that gap between the past and what's happened and being able to move forward. What do you do? What do I, what do, I do in that time? Yeah. Probably sit on the couch and um, watch movies, probably, make a cake. Oh, um, like totally different, right? Totally different. What? Totally di Nothing work-related. Nothing work-related at all. No, God, no. No, no, no. No, I give myself some grace and, and I give myself some breathing room. Um, but it's only for a certain, yeah. No, no, no. I find it really, you know, I, I know in myself that when I'm facing a big challenge, you can't keep putting square pegs in round holes. You can't keep trying to force it, right? It's just... Just stop. And I'm a very driven individual, but you need to just stop for a minute. You need to give yourself, and I'll explain why in a minute what happens in that second phase. But no, I just will do something completely indulgent and completely not related. And then, as I said, it's a, I've got an actual time frame in my head and that, and I'm very disciplined with it. And when that time is up, I then start to move into the second phase, which is the self-reflective phase. Right, so I've given myself that time. Like, what the hell just happened? Right, like, right, how am I going to pay my mortgage? All of that, right? Panic a bit, freak out, sit down, make a cake, watch a few movies, and then you no, know, because it is, it's like a, it is, it's like a like a timeline, and then I can say, right, now part two is that self reflective phase, and I'm going to share some questions with you and the listeners today around some questions that I really use because. I know how easy it is when you're faced with those situations to get into a hole, 
right? To get into a dark place, to get in like, I'm, I'm crap, you know, it, there's nothing good or, you know, whatever the case may be or the business is hopeless and it's not, right? So these are questions that I really ask myself and I'll even write them down and, and I think it's important. I'm a big fan of notes and, and not just digital notes but taking them as well because you've got to get it out of your head and onto the page, yep. So these are some questions, five questions I want to go through. Yep, and I'm going to read off them so I don't forget them. The first one is, what didn't go to plan and why? So what went wrong here? Why, why did this happen, right? Like it's almost like a post-mortem in a way. It's quite a, a critical, um, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but a critical post-mortem of the circumstance. So what didn't go to plan and why? Then the next question I ask myself is, which is really quite empowering, what did I learn? What did I learn from this experience, right? Like so often we miss this piece, yeah, and we jump to the next bit, but this is critical. What did I learn that I didn't know before? And it might be about the business. It might be about me. It might be how I show up in the world. And then the third part that comes off of that is, well, how am I going to use these questions and these lessons to benefit myself and other people? So I've made my business and mission taking crap and turning it into something valuable. That is the superpower of myself, right, and of the business, right? It's how, that's what it is. It's about how do we take those challenges and turn them into something useful. And once you've got that, you've got it forever, Jan, right? No one can come away and take it out of your head. You have it. You understand it at a deeper level. And so the next question I ask, there's five, um, number four, is would there be anything that I would do different now that I know, right? Because sometimes it's easy even when it's bad and it's really disruptive to sometimes point fingers or sometimes not own your piece too in it. And I think that's important that we do say, what would I do different? Because then it starts to remove any victim or finger pointing or whatever you can own. And I think that's that's important, right? I think even we have to own it and say, well, hang on, you know, I did make the decision that I wasn't going to... Um, do that or I did do that or whatever and I, I, I own my part as well and so I think that's not making you the victim that's empowering you to say yeah okay I would do that different next time I wouldn't go down that path and then the other one is what can I influence and what can I not so what can I do right now right like so those questions have been just life-changing for me and every time I've gone through and faced it and faced that that challenge and that adversity I always come back to them and they always settle. Like a reset, right? My work is a reset. That's how it's been explained to me. They're like, this is a reset. And so I need to go through that reset. So I've had the hiatus where I do whatever I'm hell I want to do, and it's not work related. I come then now, I'm in that mental space that okay, now game on. Self-reflection, pulling it apart, right? Using some smart questions. And then I focus on one action. So the next stage is one action, right? Like you have to get the first action done. And you know when you've had, you know what I mean, you know that when you, when you feel in yourself, you feel overwhelmed, right? And you're just, the worst thing is doing nothing, right? So it's that, you know, that absolute paralysis of not moving at all. So I'll choose one thing. It could be really simple. You might be picking up the phone and calling someone. It could be sending an email. You might be doing some research on something. But that piece of just take that first action. And when you get that first step, then you start to see it can lead on, yeah? But I always, I always make sure, particularly when you've come out or something quite, can be traumatic at times too, right? Let's not lie. I've had experiences where I would say they, they, they are quite traumatic. And I think for me, it's being kind to myself and it's making sure that when I start to have a plan, I'm not overly ambitious, so I'll always work on a goal, but I'll only have maybe one or maybe even two or three actions around it, right? I'm not going to be doing a whole plan. I'm just going to start small. Right. And off of those actions, I then think about, well, where are my knowledge and skill gaps against that? If there are some, how do I fulfill them, right? Once again, if I need to get there. What is here in terms of gaps and threats and risk that can stand in the way? And I do a piece of work that I designed called the Innovation Capability Review Jan, and that is like a risk assessment on creative entrepreneurial steroids. Wow. And it's the first piece of work that I do with any client, and I do it with myself as well too. And I have a goal, I have a particular outcome, and then I, the innovation capability review is the piece that I do off the back of it. And that is like my little roadmap. That's my guide. That's my guidebook to actually help just get 
clarity and focus around where I start and it evolves, right? So the, the beautiful thing about this is that it's not a static piece of work. And so I can mold it and shape it and move things around to see where it, it, um, it needs to sit. But once again, what it tends to do is take you out of that sort of um, victim or, you know, um, dead end sort of mindset to now starting to change your focus to something that is creative. Yeah, it's all about changing that focus to, hang on, I can actually influence this pardon me, and shape it in a way um, that if I, if I, you know, if I hadn't done this process, I would probably still be back thinking that everyone is a so-and-so and life ain't great. So they're some of the steps, Jan, that I've done and used on not just myself but with other people and again and again and again. And the recipe is right. You know, I feel that this is like making a cake, right? You know, it's got certain ingredients and when the ingredients are right, it doesn't matter who it's for or the circumstances. It will work, but it's like the cake, you know, uh, recipe that needs eggs. If that step needs to be there, it needs to be there. Don't jump on, you know, think, oh, well, it doesn't need eggs. I won't put eggs in it and then it tastes like crap. So, yeah, that's, that's you know, there's a recipe there for a reason. Um, and uh, that's what I do. And as I said, it's uh, it takes the, the paddy cam. I love that. I love that. Wow. I, I- I share the same philosophy also. If it's there, there should be a, a reason, right? Yeah. We just need to figure that out, you know, and apply it, adjust and modify. I, wow. Um, the process, <laughs> There's a lot of there. No, yeah. I can, the reason why I'm speechless at, at some point is because yeah. w- with, with that process, you can really guide and transform people's lives, you know, mm-hmm. business people, entrepreneurs, brands. And I love that you mentioned about helping them have clarity. Mm-hmm. You know, that alone can really change everything, right? And that's the reason why a lot of, you know, brands, entrepreneurs fail. It's mm-hmm. not it's not because of, you know, what they have is mm-hmm. not working. Mm-hmm. It's because of the lack of clarity. Yeah. yeah. Right? They get lost. And when you get lost, you know, you, you, the time is being used. Uh, it's getting wasted. Correct. And and with you and your message and your team, your company behind this powerful process, your clarity is being fixed. And guys, for everyone, I don't want to promote, you know, I'm not getting paid to do this. No. Um, but I really urge you guys to connect with Ali because yeah, like what you've heard, clarity is everything. Mm-hmm. If you want to pivot your business, you need someone that can help you bring your brand to the next level by understanding where you need to improve, where you need to focus on, and that is clarity. Mm. Um, Ali, I love that. Can you give us like two tips, two powerful tips on, you know, like a takeaway on how to turn challenges into yeah. opportunities based on your journey, you as a brand? Yeah. Well, look, I've given you, given you some gems there. I think for me, I would say, and you make a really good point, work out what your intent's going to be, right? I think that's, I know we talk a lot about that, Jan, and we have in other platforms, right, is understand what are you wanting to actually achieve here? Like, what is your motive and intent? What's the challenge and wanting you to wanting to, to be different from this, right? So for me, understand, as I said, where are the roadblocks to that challenge? Yep, understand what you want the intent to be. What's the outcome? What 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 is different from actually fixing this and making it different? So that is my first tip. Understand what that is. Be able to really clarify what the gaps are, what the threats and what the risks are to who to, who to. If that challenge stays here, so there's a couple of questions I ask myself, which I'll give you as a tip. What's the benefit? See, what I find too is that you've got to know the benefit and the cost of doing something with this, yeah. right? Because it's going to be challenging. Challenging. Working on the challenge is challenging, right? Like, right. so you have to be, there's two questions I always will ask people early on. One is, what's the benefit? If we can nail this and make it different, right, and have this organisation or this team work with this in a different way where it either just no longer causes a concern, it's resolved, it's now been turned into something useful. What's the benefit? And I do get them to think about the emotional side. What's the, you know, what does it look and feel like now then? Tell me, how are people engaging with one another? So that visualisation piece is critical to be able to call that. 
And then on the flip side, I say, well, then what's the cost though? If we don't move on this, yeah, because people need to like, they need to verbalise that, right? They need to actually say it themselves. And then they can make a very balanced decision about how they want to move forward. But what is the cost and to whom if we decide to do nothing? Yeah, if we decide to do nothing and say it's all too hard, what is that? And getting people to verbalise it very early on is really powerful, Jan. They're my, they're my tips. Ask yourself those two questions. I do. And then you'll make, you will make some sort of rather informed decisions off the back of that. Wow. There you have it, guys. Knowledge bomb after knowledge bomb. And I totally agree. Wow. There you have it, guys. Powerful tips, the process. I'm excited. I know you are. And let's all bring our brand to the next level by connecting with Ali. But, Ali, we're not done yet, all right? We started <laughs> with us understanding who you are as a brand, your journey, and then the process, and then the, fo the focal point, which is, you know, giving us valuable insights. Now is the time to relax and play a game. It's a bit of, it's a bit of a, uh, you know, guys, for everyone that's listening to this episode, it's a bit unfair because Ali already got an overview <laughs> of how we're going to play this game on our LinkedIn live sessions. But, you know, this is different because we can see her reaction because this is video. All right. And it's a longer <laughs> version. <laughs> all right. So we call this the creative fast talk. How it works. I'm going to ask you a question or share you statements that you're not allowed to spend much time thinking what the right answer would be. Okay. First word that comes into your mind, boom, shoot. And you're not allowed to lie. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm very nervous, everyone. <laughs> all right. Why did I agree to do this? No, come on. <laughs> because you love me. Yeah, no, I do love you. <laughs> all right. Let's start with something easy. Easy, easy, easy. All right. First question. Sun or snow? Sun. Structure or chaotic? Structure. Love or money? Love. If you were an animal, Ali, what animal would you be and why? Uh, I'd be a lion because lions have big hair. <laughs> <laughs> I was like expecting like a like an in-depth, you know, Ali vibe of explanation why that animal. It's like, no, no. okay. <laughs> 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 All right, next. Popcorn and movies or dinner and dancing? Oh, cool and movies. Love that. Okay, now that you met, you answered that, there's a follow-up question. Name your top three movies of all time. Okay, jeez. All right, I actually saw one last night, and people are going to think, I can't believe this woman's never seen it. What's, okay, now let me say this. I'm, I'm 30 years after the fact, literally. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Mm. I saw that last night for the first time ever. The first time ever. Amazing. Um, I love... Australian movies. So I love mm. Muriel's Wedding. Yeah. Mm. And I love The Castle. So they are Australian comedies, right? Like there's so many movies and it's hard for me to pick that, but they are movies that really have, have shaped our, uh, our vocab here, our language. Right? Right. And um, they're such a, a great, uh, yeah, they, they, they show the character, I think, of Australians that, you know, um, we, we do have sort of pretty unique quirks. So, uh, yeah, they're my, they're my three at the moment. That's what I'm giving you. Love you, love you. All right, next. Ali, are you a passenger or a driver? Driver. Mountains or the beaches? Mountains. Ali, what are you afraid of? Not achieving my full potential. Whoa, now there is an Ali vibe answer. <laughs> that, that's a big one. We could do a whole, there's a lot of clinical psychologists that have worked with me on that. But yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, no, that would be, that would be. I'm not afraid of many things, Jan, but yeah. Let me follow. It's not on the list, right? It's not on the list. But let me follow up on that. Why? Why that answer of, you know, a lot of, uh, you can answer a lot, but why focus on that? Oh, because I think that's how, that's how I've been. That's how I am. That's how I've always been. Right? I've always pushed myself. If you think about how I was a kid, you know, like my mum says to me, there's no off button with you. There never has been. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just don't want to feel that I've left anything, you know, any junk in the trunk. And I want to feel that I didn't do anything, you know, that I that I could have done it. And I think maybe 
I've never had any regrets to this point. I've, I've, you know, turned 50 this year and I've never had that and I don't want that. And I think maybe, you know, as you get into move into other decades and you've got all this knowledge and you've got, you know, things you want to do, you just feel maybe that time perhaps to be honest with everyone is, is there a little bit more. But, um, yeah, no, I think for me that is probably the, the greatest fear, Jan. Like I said, I've done things that I've moved. I've moved in the middle of pandemics. I've lived overseas on my own and sold everything. I've walked away from, like I said, you know, my only client when I just built a house. Yeah, I've done big right. things that might seem fearful to other people, but nothing makes me probably, you know, the fear that would probably kick me up at night sometimes would be that. Love that. Wow. God damn it, Jen. You got into the soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Damn you. You mentioned, you mentioned the key word there when you were a kid. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hone in on that. What is something always inside your bag when you were a little girl, when you were a kid? In my bag. Fruit, probably. Fruit. Fruit or a tennis racket. Well, I played a lot of sport too, right? So I played a lot of competitive sport when I was junior. Um, so I reckon fruit or a tennis racket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, next. Yeah. What is the weirdest food you've ever tried? Uh, it would be sweet breads. So it would be, yeah. so sweet breads are, um, awful. So it would be, so just thinking about it, it would be veal lymph nodes. Yeah. It wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. God, that was a long time ago. That would have been like late nineties or something, Jan. <laughs> like that's yeah. Veal lymph nodes. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet breads. Yeah. If you see them on the menu, that's what they are. Okay. Nah. <laughs> Nah, do I do it? Next. <laughs> what is your dream superpower and why, Ali? My dream superpower. So I don't have it, but I'd like it to fly. To, to fly. Like, you know, you've had those dreams, Jan, where you're flying over mm. land and over buildings. It's quite amazing because you've never seen that scene before, right? You've never looked over your house or whatever. Oh, well, yeah. Right. So how do you think, how do you know what that looks like? But you do. So I find that the, the power, you know, that, that flying, and I've even had dreams, you know, where you sort of, <laughs> now people are really going to think I'm with you, but you know where you're flapping your wings, you're like a bird, right? And you can feel yourself falling a bit and then you flap harder and you elevate again. I mean, it's just, no, like I said, I don't. I've, I've got rid of every vice out of my life, so I don't even drink anymore. So uh, I'm very clean living. Uh, it's a natural high. It's a natural high. <laughs> but, yeah, that would be my superpower, my dream superpower. Right, right. So this last question could be, it, it can turn into something serious depending on how you take it, all right? Yeah. If you have the power to bring back someone, back from the dead, who would it be and why? Oh, gee. See, that's a, that's a deep question, isn't it, right? If I had anyone. Probably be my grandma. I reckon it would be my mum's mum, I think, because... Yeah, she died very, I mean, she was 91 and I'm very grateful um, that we had her for that long. But yeah, she was awesome. She was an awesome individual. And I think that because she died very quickly and, you know, you can get that opportunity to sort of have that that ability to say goodbye. And because, you know, I'm very much like my mother, my mother is very much like her. You know, it's, um, you know, you see yourself now, you know, too, when you look at photos and I've got a, a lovely photo of her probably when she was 21 with her sister just over here in, in the office. And, uh, yeah, I, I think that if I could bring her back, uh, that would be that would be who it is. At the moment, I'm still very much in a privileged position to have my parents with me still, and I'm very grateful for that in their 80s. But, yeah, my grandma. I didn't see that one coming. I, I'll push I'll push up uh, one level to that question. Yeah. What if you are inside a coffee shop and you saw your grandma there? Yeah. But you can only ask her one question. What would be that question? Jeez, oh, Jan, I need to lie down after this. <laughs> Welcome to the live version. <laughs> yeah. Look, I would probably want to know a bit more about what my mum was like, right? Like, because I know a little bit, but I'd like to get the inside scoop from her about what my mum was like. You know, what was my mum really like as a teenager? There you go. There you go. You know, that one would be good. That one, I reckon, would be, yeah, that would be pretty, I might know a little bit of that, I reckon, but I think that one, yeah, yeah, that one would be good. 
the answer would be like a story, right? Because you can't you can't just give like two to three sentences. So yeah. perfect question, and I'm sure she is so proud of you. Oh, friend. thank you, Jan. Yeah, no, and I think that's the thing. Like when people do pass, so you take parts of you know that heritage and that history with you. And I do come from a line of entrepreneurial women um, and strong women, and uh, yeah, they live on into the next generation as well. And I think we we owe it. I think to you know ourselves and um, if you're spiritual or religious or whatever you believe in, but yeah, we are like that. Yeah, we're part of something bigger, so we need to. And and look, let's get real, Jan. We're not going to get out of this alive, mate. So we yeah. better have a go, and we better show up. And that's what I always say to myself when I'm feeling a little bit wobbly or a little bit whatever hesitant. Um, I do remind myself of that. And so this has oh, been wow. a really uh, great privilege to be on here with you too, and uh, reset my own brain as well too so thank you for the opportunity wow there you have it guys very beautiful and amazing Ali Arin here in the show I'm sure she can help you in your journey towards success so please do connect with her um Ali I know you have a lot of events projects releases please feel free to promote your social media platforms anything that you have crafted for everyone yep. feel free to promote and share the floor is yours my friend yeah and no, i thank you so look there's a lot of different content out there that you can explore complimentary so there's the website so kickstart k-i-i-k-s-t-a-r-t.com there's podcasts and videos and uh, blogs and, and just articles that might you know things that won't make it to linkedin um but this uniquely for the website so go and have a look at that and you'll see different ways that we can potentially work together um, and then LinkedIn, you know, I write every day original content, content that is, you know, from out in the real world, out in the trenches, the good, the bad, the ugly. So, you know, practicing what I preach. And so, I'd, you know, get you to become part of the community and, and join in and um, let's support one another and what we're doing. And, uh, yeah, as I said, I do, um, you can see it now when you go on the uh, on my featured section as well. You'll be able to, if you're interested in working together, 30-minute casual complimentary discussion where we talk about you, where you're at, how do I work, would it would it work, would it be the right fit? And that's just a nice casual way to have a more personalised discussion as well too without any pressure. So, yeah, that's what I would uh, encourage people to – you've got lots to explore. There's lots of good options, but not too many, but enough. As I said, I give you just the right amount of choice. Three, three is the magic number. Three ways of working together is the magic number. So, I'm, you know, even – refined it and like I said it's always a constant you know piece of work self-reflective piece about what stays and what goes and whatever so yeah I uh, very much practice what I preach I'm out in the trenches <laughs> love it so guys again please do connect with Ali I'm sure she can guide you on your way to the next level and to reach that success in life so Ali thank you so much again I said thank this you. off cam and I'll say it again I love you. I love your message. Thank you for being with us here on the show. Thank you so much, everyone. Go forth and I look forward to connecting in. And thanks, Jan, too. Bye, everyone. Have a positive outlook in life. Smile. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you for being with us here on the Creative Talk Podcast. I'm your host, John Santos. Don't forget to listen and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. See you again, always.